Hello everybody, what is up? My name is King Spinach, and welcome back to my Dragon Age Inquisition Let's Play walkthrough. We're gonna head over to the War Council. Um, sorry about the last episode, lots of technical difficulties, I just shortened it all down for you guys. I hope you enjoyed the post-commentary thing anyways. Um, but we're gonna pick up all the missions that I sent these guys on, we're gonna cash them in, or whatever it is. We're gonna complete them, I guess. I think they're the blinking ones. Yeah, address them, yep. So... What rewards did we get? It didn't Have you had any trouble with them? Not at all. Ooh, 30 I will inform you if that changes. Oh, cool. We built the watchtowers. Perfect. Oh, man, I should have read those. Dang it. Well, if you guys want to see what they are or what they were, feel free to just, um, just, just pause the video. Check those out. I'll read this, though. The Turn of High Ever. To whom it concerns... The Turner of High Ever wishes to convey our deepest sympathies on the death of Divine Justinian V. The Most Holy was incomparable in her wisdom and dedication to peace, and we had high hopes that her conclave would succeed. We will hold a vigil in High, high Ever to, in remembrance of Justinia, and cordially invite the Inquisition to attend. Sincerely, Tyron Fergus Coastland. We have a, mem we have a number of Ferelden and officers. We could send an honor guard. Yeah, all right, Cullen. What about this one? Hard in High Town 3, Varric's Revenge, Ruffles. I need a favor. Actually, let's call it a loan since I'll pay it back. I got a letter from my editor in Kirkwall today. She tells me that Hard in Hightown 3, the repunchioning, appeared in print from an Antivian printer a couple weeks ago. I'll give you a moment to contemplate the horror that is that title. I had my contacts in the Merchant's Guild look for the author a couple years back. The best they could find out after sending a couple hundred gold was that Peril Bechelenforth <laughs> is a pen name. I could have told them that for free. You've got contacts with the Antivan print houses. Maybe you could find out more than the guild, Varric. If this author has evaded the Merchant's Guild, the Crows might have a better choice for investigating. All right, Liliana. Let's see what we have. Go, you do you. Okay, what's this? Gather coin, recruit soldiers, scout the hinterlands. This is Val Royo and the other things. So let's do the gather coin for uh, Josephine, which is, I think she just goes get goes and gets money. Up until now, Inquisition forces have had the benefit of the Chantry's deepest coffers. Now, the Inquisition is forced to seek out its own sources of revenue if it is to grow, a going to grow further. Trade in and out of Haven is limited at this point, but there are various opportunities to earn coin, provided the Inquisition is willing to focus its efforts on the matter. She takes the at least amount service. of time. Perfect. All right, now let's head to Val Royo because we're going to be doing a lot of story this this uh, these next few episodes. Thank God. I love I love story. I, I'm so excited. The remaining Chantry clerics have declared the Inquisition heretical. Attempts to gather allies against the breach have been rebuffed, and at this moment we could not step foot into the capital without being attacked by a mob or arrested. We must convince the Chantry to permit us entry into the city so that we can show them the Herald of Andraste is not the monster they believe. Recommended levels 4 to 7, we fit right into that gap. Having the Herald address the clerics is not a terrible idea. You can't be serious. Mother Giselle isn't wrong. At the moment, the Chantry's only strength is that they are united in opinion. And we should ignore the danger to the Herald. Let's ask him. Well, you know, I'm not really that worried. What can they do? It's just talk. Don't underestimate the power of their words. An angry mob will do you in just as quickly as a blade. I will go with him. Mother Giselle said she could provide us names. Use them. But why? This is nothing but a... What choice do we have, Liliana? Right now, we can't approach anyone for help with the breach. Use what influence we have to call the clerics together. Once they are ready, we will see this through. All right. Address the Chantry in Val Royo. The remaining Chantry clerics have declared the Inquisition heretical. Attempts to gather allies against the breach have been rebuffed, and at this moment, we cannot... Oh, I just read that. <laughs> uh, power cost four. We have twenty-seven. We got more than enough. Let's do it. Oh, hey, achievement! I also got an achievement for finishing one of those missions. By the way, um, it popped up like ten minutes later. I'm assuming it was running in the background, and they finished. So awesome, bear. <laughs> Hi, Chancellor Roderick. I like how they have these, like, tarot card type things. Pretty interesting. Except there's so much text and they don't give you enough time to read it. And then the loading screen afterwards continues 
but it's black. Like, why couldn't they just leave it on so I could read the actual text? Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Most annoying loading screens. <laughs> um, ooh, I'm looking forward to all the story, though. And I've heard that we can pick up a, an ally or two here, like another companion here, which is pretty cool. I'm looking forward to that, I'll tell you that much. But mostly I'm interested in the story. Like, I, I want to know what happens next. The city still mourns. Just a guest seeker, but I think they all know who we are. Your skills of observation never fail to impress me, Varric. Sass. My Lord Herald. You're one of Leliana's people. What have you found? The Chantry Mothers await you, but so do a great many Templars. There are Templars here? People seem to think the Templars will protect them from... from the Inquisition. They're gathering on the other side of the market. I think that's where the Templars intend to meet you. Only one thing to do, then. The city's pretty gorgeous. They wish to protect the people Whoa. from us? Well, I'll talk to you. Okay. No Return way. to Haven. Someone will need to inform them if we have delayed. As you say, my lady. I thought it was going to give me dialogue options. I'll read this. Mafroth's blood guilt. Sna scr uh, beneath, scratch my vandal, and his head suddenly weighs too much. <laughs> That's funny. What else is there? The avenue of her reflective thought inscribed upon a plaque. Our lady and the actors of Horizon Fall, her message and visage are worth repeating. Well, that's nice. Mafret's remorse. Beneath, scratched by Vandal. At meeting a low door frame. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> what else is there? These are these are funny. Mafret's regret about his unfortunate hair. <laughs> Oh, this is, like, legitimate. Okay. The avenue of her reflective thought. There's no way that on that little plaque that all this is written. Absolutely not. The avenue is inspirational, but wise travelers do not linger in their respects. Not just because the bazaar awaits, but because the area before the back-turned statues is treacherous. Local legend has it that the child empress, Amy, abused the opportunity of religious repose to, to relieve herself beneath the gaze of Our Lady. Unable to discipline the toddling leader, her attendants instead chastised the statues and had them turned in supposed embarrassment. True or not, foolish youths dare each other to soil the spot in similar fashion, and a place of otherwise reverent thought always carries a faint odor about it. Excerpted and torn from a disposable walking tour of the capital by Philium, a bard, exclamation point. What's this? Mafrat's penitence, an and unrelated headache. Jesus. <laughs> Those are really funny. Oh man, so I guess this Orlais is pretty French, huh? Oh, there's more stuff to read here. What does this say? I'll read it. The first line of Orlais. In respect to Emperor Alphonse Valmont, the lines of Orlais, a repeating element dedicated to the great defenders otherwise noted. It is rumored that one is gold, one is bronze and weighted with poison, one is chocolate, and one is watching. As the saying goes, dare we all a thief to test his back and learn which is the most dangerous to try, deny, or lay. In truth, we are all lead and leaf. Don't pretend to ride them too long, lest the mind give way. Excerpted and torn from a disposable walking tour of the capital by Philium. Same dude. There's something else over here that we can grab. What's this? Oh, there's so many things. Oh, there's a note. Not of heroes united in hatred. If we are re-examining motive, let us not stop at the sons of the betrayer. For the first leader of young Orlais after the two sons of Jeshavis, Chatel wife of two of them. But examine the facts. A proud daughter of the Syri Syrian, chosen not unkindly by Isareth to be his bride. It was her reach that granted him power to unify. Considering, consider what she witnessed in the consul consolidation of her people. There are some weird words here. She has always been portrayed with sadness, but what if when our nation was born, the game was born with it? Judge her actions not as property but as master, and what changes? As victim, Isareth, rumored cruel, breaks the clans in a lust for power. His brother, Verald, 
exile from his own mach machinations, I think? Machinations in young Navarra. Appeals to the saddened wife and promises a new path. The brothers vie, and Verald wins and then demands the hand of Jessevi. Another Ferald and greedy for power. In a decade, the shy victim Jessevi is a figurehead of the people's rebellion against the last son of the betrayer. As master, bound to rivalries far older, she harbors a hatred beyond Tevinter. And while Isareth is distracted with personal concern over building a nation to withstand his people's own enemy, she invites the broken brother and sets him against the Driven. While accepting marriage to the victor, Jessavi seeds rebellion among those who remember how their lands were taken not a generation before. Both should both leave her as ruler, as oh jeez, I can't pronounce that Gyoja, maybe. But should not the rule of a victim be been uncertain? Jessavi rules for forty-two years. There were no great swings backward, no people's retribution, for she had become accustomed. If the goals of Isareth were selfish and the goals of Jessevi were was to reserve them, then Orlea is born of the failure of both. But if Isareth built his father's wall and Jessevi wanted revenge, then we are a nation of two successes, two partners, in opposition but in partnership. Excerpted from a history not of heroes, readings in the ugly heart of change by collected by Philium. Oh man, this Philium dude is just all about the all about the literature here. Fast travel. Oh, I guess that's kinda neat. More reading. She of the Highwayman repents. Oh, that's a song. I'm not gonna read it if it's a song. Another fast travel. Let's read this book. Emperor Florian. Grand Duke Florian was not supposed to ascend to the Orlesian throne. His elder brother, Emperor Judical II, had two twin sons and thus a very secure line. Florian was free to pursue other interests, none of which revolved around the game. Indeed, the Imperial Court largely ignored him, and that was how he liked it. All that is recorded of that era is that he married, produced a single daughter, and afterwards showed little interest in her. An outbreak of the Hundred Days Cough in 877, Blessed changed his plans. Both of Judicile's sons perished, as did Florian's daughter. Racked by grief, Judicile lost interest in ruling, turning over all matters pertaining to the rebellion in Ferelden to his advisors and instead spending his time hunting in the country. When Judicile was thrown from his horse during a fox hunt in 884 West, Flo Florian was suddenly vaulted into the throne. Famously, his response to the Chevaliers de delivering the news at his estate is said to be, This will not do at all. A private and somewhat eccentric man, Florian limited his appearances at court and dealt, with all dealt almost exclusively with members of his own family. He was extremely particular about his habits of dress and grooming, eschewing current fashions for the sake of comfort and refusing to wear cosmetics or powders of any kind due to an intense dislike of being dirty. Powerful and connected nobles who had served in the cabinet since his father's time were turned away in favor of his younger brother, Reynaud, his sister, Melisande, and his cousins. Children were banned from the palace, even the children of servants, with the exceptions of his ne nephew and nieces, who were tolerated only on the condition that they remained out of the emperor's sight. Regarding suggestions that Florian and his youngest cousin, Megrin, were lovers, the truth is uncertain. If such a relationship existed, it was no doubt kept private due to Florian's aversion to public life and not from fear of any rumors. Uh, not from any fear of rumors. Such rumors, after all, were likely spread due to the Emperor's refusal to sire another child and thus secure his line. Many believed this falling would eventually lead to civil war. The only real evidence of the relationship with Megrin is a loud and very public argument the two had prior to Megrin's appointment, or exile as he saw it, to the throne of Ferelden. Megrin is said to have called Florian my darling, and neither man chose to explain the argument later. The predictions of civil war almost came to pass upon Florian's death in 919 Dragon. With no clear heir, the throne eventually passed to the only daughter of Grand Duke Reynaud, Selene, after a vicious struggle that threatened to consume the empire, from the Emperor's Overlay by brother Harlan Ascari.